Welcome back to Morbidly Bewitched. In the last episode, I gave you a Halloween special. Before that, I talked you through how embalming was introduced into the Western civilization. For this episode, I'm going to be taking you to Egypt and their mummification practices. So stay tuned. Embalming. Yes, here we are again. Something that most people only ever associate it with Egypt, especially mummification. But I'm going to explain to you just how different the Egyptians cared for their dead and why. Embalming practices in the Western civilization bear no resemblance really whatsoever when compared to the Egyptians. So why is that? Well, when we embalm bodies here, we do it for three main reasons, and that is sanitization, preservation, and presentation. But religion doesn't really come into it. In Egypt, it's the complete opposite. Their embalming practices and their mummification is solely revolved around their religious beliefs. We embalm our deceased so that we can view them during a wake, with the process resulting in a more aesthetically pleasing appearance without the troublesome worries that usually goes with decomposition, like the smells, the change in colour. Essentially, with all intent and purpose, to freeze frame our loved one for a temporary small moment in time so that we can mourn our dead under a much more prettier facade, albeit temporary. Our religions over here are so diverse. We have so many different beliefs set in place of what happens to us after we die, with some people genuinely believing that there is nothing at all. It's final curtain. But one thing that we do usually share amongst our different religious beliefs is that the mortal body decays and returns to earth and has no connection with the afterlife. It's our spirit, our soul that moves on. Egyptians, however, believed the complete opposite. Very strongly that their body was intertwined with the gods after death, death merely being a gateway into another world where they would be rejuvenated and reunited with their ba, which translates as their own personality. That meant that embalming and preservation and mummification to them was extremely important. It was a ceremony carried out by sacred high status individuals and many spells and rituals are also carried out during the funerary process. Let me talk you through. So to give you a rough idea of what ancient Egyptians truly believed happened to them and I have to add at this point I love Egyptians, I love Egypt, hence I even have Egyptian things going on in my living room. Um, so to talk you through, first of all, they believed that when they died, they would meet with the god Osiris. Osiris was the god of the dead and he would judge you upon the gateway. Your heart would be weighed against a feather of judgment. If your heart weighed too heavy, it meant you were an unhonest person in life. You would not enter into the afterlife and your soul and body would be devoured by Amit, a crocodile-headed god also of the dead. If your heart weighed evenly with the feather on the scales of judgment, then you would be deemed fit for the afterlife and walk past the gateway into the field of reeds and a luxurious 
afterlife awaited you there. Mummification by embalmers is believed in Egyptology to have started approximately 3,000 years ago, meaning late Second Dynasties and the beginning of the Old Kingdom. So roughly 2,686 BC. Before this, because of the complete lack of humidity in Egypt, the dry air, the environment, mummification was a naturally occurring process. But that led everyone to believe, including the kings and the queens of the land, the pharaohs, who were considered gods themselves, that this was an act by the gods and bodies had to be in this condition to be accepted into the afterlife. Hence, their further study into the practices of preparing the dead. Ancient Egyptians lived their lives to appease the gods, period. If they did not stick to their rituals, their belief systems, they genuinely believed that the sun would not rise and the moon would not follow. The world as they knew it would come to an end. So to appease their gods of the dead, they decided to try and work on how best they could preserve the deceased. They used sarcophagi, which is the Egyptian terminology for coffin, and started placing their dead inside these containers. However, it had an adverse effect at the beginning, essentially logging in moisture and protecting the body from the, the dry environment. That caused the body to enter into a state of decomposition rather than desiccation. So they had to do further research into the Egyptian embalmer. They spent years traveling the globe to the best of their ability to collect different resins and scents and oils so that they could use them on their deceased and best preserve them for the afterlife. When royalty passed away, because mummification by embalmers when it started was only privy to royalty, people of high status. So when that person passed away, they got to work immediately. This involved an embalmer, and in Egyptology, embalmers were extremely high status individuals and granted priesthoods. A priest, someone who had the um, head of Anubis, also God of the Dead, to preside over and watch over the embalming process, and a cutter. A sacred area was also chosen to carry out this entire procedure, a funerary temple. And inside that temple was everything that they needed to carry out the task. The body was first placed on a table and the entire surface of the body was washed down in a ritual with scented oils and water and palm wine. Now because the embalmer had such high status and granted priesthood, a cutter was employed to do the dirty work, so to speak, because the removal of the organs and the incision at the side of the body was still deemed desecration of the dead and beneath the role of the high status embalmer. The cutter made an incision on the lower lateral flank of the abdomen and from there they removed every single organ from all of the internal cavities. All of the internal cavities was then also washed out with palm wine ready for dehydration. The dehydration agent that was used in all mummification in abundance was called natron. This was a naturally occurring salt mineral that they harvested from riverbeds right across Egypt. Their favored oils and resins that they'd gathered from across the globe were things like frankincense and myrrh and cinnamon to stave off fungus and bacteria and resins like cedar and pine. Now what of all the little organs that has been removed? Well, they each got their own little individual home. Miniature coffins or jars called canopic jars were carved with the head 
of the four sons of Horus to house organs. Imseti, the human-headed god, was for the liver. Hapi, the baboon-headed god, was for the lungs. Duamatef was the jackal-headed god for the stomach. And Kebizenwef was the falcon-headed god for the intestines. All of these organs individually, through a ritual again, were washed with palm wine, packed with natron, wrapped in linen, and then put into their appropriate jars. These jars were then put into a canopic chest, and this would sit beside the sarcophagus of the beloved pharaoh. All other organs, like the kidneys and the pancreas, were not deemed important enough by the Egyptians to be kept, so they were disposed of apart from the heart. The heart was washed and rubbed in different resins and oils, packed with natron and put back inside the chest cavity because they believed that the heart was the seat of all consciousness to do with that being and contained their ba, their personality. It was also needed for their entry into the afterlife when it had to be weighed against a feather by the god Osiris, so they needed it. An iron hook was then put up inside each nostril. The embalmer could not damage any external features. That was a huge no-no. But they had to punch through the back of the nasal cavity into the vault of the skull, scramble the brain and pull it back down through each nostril and try and get as much as possible. The brain, funny enough, was also discarded because they believed it wasn't important. They believed everything to do with that person was the heart. Brain was threw out. The entire body was then covered in a mound of natron and left to cure for 40 days. This soaked out any last piece of moisture from the remaining tissue. When the time was up, the priest and the embalmer went back to the funerary temple and they carried out further rituals, magical spell casting over the body and began to clean the body from the natron and start rubbing it with different scented oils to guard against fungus and bacteria. Empty cavities were packed out with leaves and straw they then coated the body in a thick layer of resin, usually from cedar or pine, and proceeded to wrap the body in the well-known bandages of a mummy in meters and meters of linen. This could take 30 to 40 days, again on top of the curing process. Thicker resins were even used for an Egyptian form of extremely early plastic surgery where they would fill out areas that they thought looked like they'd collapsed like the arch of the nose the bridge of the nose the cheekbones things that they thought again was extremely important in the afterlife for them to look their best the final and extremely important part of the funerary process by the embalmer and the priest was the opening of the mouth ceremony. Because let's face it, they went through all of this work, but upon entering the gateway and getting into the afterlife, you're not going to do very well if you can't speak or eat or see or hear or defecate or anything. So they used specific tools touched against certain parts of the mummified and wrapped body to allow that person to receive sustenance in the afterlife, converse in the afterlife, see and hear and do everything that they would have done on this moral plane. The opening of the mouth ceremony was always carried out by the heir to the throne. This was all then finished off with the most lavish of funerary tombs to provide that pharaoh, that god in their image with the most extravagant afterlife they could possibly have with riches and golds and food, pets and sometimes servants were all put down in there with them. They also had a fully functioning tomb 
So they would have um, toilet facilities, a banquet hall, a kitchen area. So it was a replica of what they could do in life, they could do in death. To give you an idea of just how sacred the ceremony of death was to the Egyptians, it wasn't until the ancient hieroglyphic text was deciphered by the French Egyptologist Jean-Francois Jean-Paulion in 1822, September 27th, after extensive studies of the Rosetta Stone, that there were no true texts depicting what happened by the embalmer during the funeral process. Everything else in that person's life was carved in stone, quite literally. What they did during their life, what they reigned over during their life, the gods, their home, their family, their battles, but never their funeral practices. It has taken us years of study and the advancement in our own technology to get to where we are today and know what we know now, because they just didn't write it down anywhere. So sacred was this text. So as you can see, embalming as we know it today, and the ancient Egypts and their embalming practices and mummification could not be any more different. But I have nothing to compare it to, I hear you ask. Join me in my next video, where I will be explaining to you how we carry out our embalming procedure today in the 21st century. And you will be able to then compare the sheer difference between the two. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and I will see you soon.